I got started in officiating because I was playing basketball at East Texas State, and the basketball players had to officiate the games between sororities and fraternities. It was kind of interesting because we had a big Quonset hut for our gymnasium that had one main course that went up and down. But for these intramural games, they had three courts side by side with about a foot distance in between them. So you had three games going on at the same time with basketballs going back and forth across everybody's court, whistles blowing, people stopping. So it was a rather interesting start to officiating. The best advice I could give a young official getting into officiating is the first thing you got to clear it with your family. If you can't get your wife and your family on board with you, and it's going, and if you go far enough, it's going to take up a lot of your times. So if you can't get your wife on board with it, uh, you're going to be fighting an uphill battle. Uh, and I've seen too many that had to both try to prioritize their time for officiating and for family. And it gets to be really tough, is right. And then the second thing is probably you need to really know the rules because uh, you'll be surprised how many times you get in a situation where you're the only one that knows the rules or there's nobody that knows the rules. And that's not a good situation. I would like to think that my officiating impacted other people primarily by making them feel comfortable doing the officiating and having a good time. We tried to always work in some entertainment along with our officiating trips. Uh, I had a crew that played golf, and sometimes we had some very good venues that we were able to weasel our way into to play, and that we would play golf on Fridays and eat dinner on fr Friday night and then work the ball game Saturdays. But while we had a lot of fun doing a lot of that, then when it got time to get serious, then we'd get serious. So uh, I, think, uh, I, I like to think that they really had a good time officiating in my group. One of my most memorable moments in officiating was when Auburn was playing Florida early in the season, both teams undefeated. The week before the game, Auburn had played Mississippi State. And Mississippi State had called the SEC office after their game and informed the SEC that they thought that the Auburn punter was using a football that had helium because he was punting so well. So the SEC office called me on Wednesday and said they wanted me not to tell anybody else but the crew. But when Auburn punted the football, they wanted us to get that football, take it to the sideline and keep it and bring it back to Birmingham and they were going to check it to see if it had helium in it. Now the, the follow up to all of that is that First series of downs, Auburn is, gets held for downs. They punt the ball, and I mean, he could really boom it. His last name was Holmes, and he played in the NFL for about 15 years. I don't really remember the kid, but he could punt is right. And I hear the announcer say, 58 yards, no return. Made a fair catch. And I thought, man, we need to get that football is right. We already had this pre-planned that the... The back judge took the ball over to the alternate official on the sideline and he put it underneath his jacket and held it and the little ball boy come down there wanting the ball back and we wouldn't give it back to him. And I knew he was sweating blood because that's something they can't afford to do is lose a football. Well, then to the, the follow up on that, I said, okay, we got that done. We got an important ball game. We need to get our mind on the game now. The next very series of downs, uh, Auburn has to punt again. They're on their own 29-yard line. So the kicker's back about his 15. He booms the punt out of there, and I see the receiver down there just running hard as he could backwards. The ball hit inside the five-yard line and rolled out of the end zone. My first thought was, man, we need to swap balls. We need to get that ball. But my guys, sure enough, had already gotten, a, uh, gotten the one ball that we needed, so they went ahead and we did not get that ball. And then sure enough, they bring it back to Birmingham. They send it to Georgia Tech to check it to see if it had helium, and it did not have any helium in it, just regular air. Well, one of the little funny things was with it, Troy, that happened to me here in officiating. Troy State is playing Mississippi State in one of those homecoming games at Mississippi State. But Troy State had a pretty good team. And so early on in the ball game, they score. 
And just as they are kicking the extra point to go 7 nothing ahead, the sirens go off all around the stadium. There's a tornado warning. And I look up and the whole stadium's already emptied out and they're telling everybody to get to the locker rooms, everybody hunker down. And as we're leaving off the field, a little assistant coach for Troy State runs up to me and he says, how long are we going to be off? And I said, well, I have no idea. We'll have to check with the weather and kind of see what happens. He said, well, take as long as you want to. This is the first time we've ever been ahead of a SEC team. As far as meeting my goals in officiating were concerned, I never did write down any goals that I wanted to go this or do this or get this far in life. I really each week wanted to do better than I did the week before. And whatever I thought I'd messed up the week before, that would be the thing I really concentrated on the next week to make sure I got that right. I thought that I usually did pretty good sometimes. Sometimes I would revert back and make the same mistake twice, but tried not to do that. Being voted into this Alabama Sports Officials Hall of Fame by your peers is the really important part. There's so many times that people get an award and it's presented to them by people that have decided they were good at something that the people that were doing the deciding had no idea what was involved. But in this particular case, the people that are selecting you to come into this are the people that know about officiating. If you were left this up to the fans, the fans like every official when they win. When they lose, they don't like any of them. So to have this voted on by your peers really means something to me.